Hey guys, give you a little uh, preview of what I'm gonna show you guys in the video today because honestly this week was so hectic and fast, I didn't get as much nuts and bolts shooting done during the process as I would have liked. Um, you can kind of see behind me the garage where uh, what we, the, the week ended up being that my Amish guys were only gonna work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, they had mostly formed the footings on Friday. And um, Monday, me and Keith came in and just by ourselves in about half the day tied all the rebar for inspection in the footings. Um, and then we went and uh, got the inspection on Tuesday morning, poured the footings on Tuesday afternoon. And uh, then on Wednesday, came in with the total station. The first couple hours in the morning, we relayed out this house. It's a massive, it's 170 feet long from the tip of the uh, master bedroom all the way over to the far end of the garage. So uh, laying it out is kind of a chore. The total station helps a lot. And we, we replaced the house and they started stacking about 10 a.m. and they were done with about 1,500 feet of ICF uh, square feet, guesstimating, um, that's probably about right, um, by the end of that day. Spent uh, most of Thursday morning bracing it. And uh, you can see they uh, we got it poured on we got it poured on Thursday. Today's Friday. We're actually two rows higher right here above the pour. Uh, they, after they got it poured, they just started stacking again. So absolutely massive three days of progress. And I'll show you kind of uh, a lot of the pour. We actually poured it without a pump. We kind of hillbillied it a little bit and made a hopper that slides along the wall. It comes in really handy on short walls and just even though this is a lot, it was only about 27 yards. So bringing a pump in seemed a little pro, um, prohibitive, just trying to uh, really make progress and not have to schedule another guy. The next pour on this one, guys, um, will be after training. By the way, we have a training uh, with all three pools on ICF and pool training, uh, October 17th, 18th, and 19th. And we did have a, about three guys have to back out due to scheduling. So I know there is a couple spaces open if you want to hit up support at all3pools.com, Patrick will give you the info on that. But it'll be after that because we now have to go up 12 feet. They got to backfill all this gravel up to grade, which is down here. Plumber comes in and grades everything in. And then we will have probably a week of installing heat sheet heavy and a very elaborate hydronic system in the house and the pool and an ice melt system on the back patio. Again, I, I've been teasing this, all heated by a dialectic uh, fluid heat exchanger on Bitcoin miners. It sounds crazy, but if the science is even close to what is advertised, it's, it should work really well. And it's gonna be pretty neat considering those, uh, those computers generate more income than they cost to run. So I'm gonna be bringing you guys content on that, but here you go guys. I'll show you uh, the, pro the final progress video of the week. Sunday, I'm gonna do a uh, walkthrough on these amazing new Logix blocks. This was our first pour. I'm in love with them guys. See you soon. All right, guys, so the first step that we're gonna do, today's the first day we're using these Logix um, Elements blocks. They're really cool. So the first thing we're gonna do, you know, we don't try to put pins in, it's just way too busy. There's a, there's a web every eight inches, it's only six inch centers. So we're gonna take an SDS bit that's long enough to reach down in here. Normally we use a corded SDS Max, it drills like butter, but we don't have power out here yet. So we're gonna put one in the corner and we're gonna drill it. I'm not gonna bother doing it right now. My boys are gonna do it as soon as I turn the camera off. And then I'm gonna go every 16 inches. We're going for a very high wind rating. I think usually they want it on 32. You can go to 16, get a higher wind rating. So we're gonna drop verticals in. We'll, put, we'll glue it in with Sika anchor adhesive. We'll glue each one in after we blow the holes out. Again, my boys are gonna do that, so I'm not gonna shoot that, but I mean, you guys have seen that a million times. But I am gonna show you over here kind of a cool thing we're doing with our bastard joints or our, our butt joints to make sure that they are the least amount of work possible. Okay guys, so we just relayed out the whole house on the total station. We started down at the bottom. This is the highest point. It's actually only one row deep. We're gonna end up putting two rows on there so it all snaps together. I'll show you how they click together because it's super cool. Um, very much like Nudura, but once you click two together, it's more robust. We're only gonna be putting about 12 inches of concrete in this wall because it's only about eight inches out of the ground. Um, and we've got, we're just trying to get the steps poured in so that we can backfill this with gravel and get up to the slab grade. The plumbers can rough in. We can get everything laid out for the hydronic heat. And then while we're doing that, my boys will go up another 12 feet. That said, you can see here, they've painted on the footing. As soon as we laid out the walls, they came over and measured off every corner. And 
what they did is they showed me the window center and the actual rough opening because we're gonna have a bastard joint on almost every face of this house. That's the way houses work, pools, we just cheat them a little bit to avoid it. On a house, you gotta be dead on your layout. So we're gonna make sure that this bastard joint or the non-conforming butt joint, whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna make sure that it falls in this window. So at least when we're bracing, especially on doors, we've got three, four, five courses that we don't have to bother with it. So it's just, if you factor in every one of your little stitches across those joints, we're gonna have far less if we do this on every face, make sure every single one of them hits a window. So something we like to do, it's not necessary by any means, but it does save some, save some screws and save some, save some time. So anyway, guys, I uh, won't be able to show a bunch of the snapping together because the boys are doing most of it, but I will show you a little bit and then uh, we'll show you the pour. All right, guys, today is October 3rd. We're just, uh, I guess, two days past the uh, footing pour and we are going to be pouring the walls today up to grade. It probably will make a lot more sense now when I spin this around to give you a quick tour. Noise in the background, they're actually drilling the well today. So um, I'll flip this thing around and give you a walk around. You'll be able to see the grade a lot better now that we have a level, a level surface to go off of. Okay, so you can kind of see this step up here. The only reason we've done that, because this is the grade of the slab right here. We added this second layer simply to lock everything together. It's kind of hard just laying one row of ICF because there's nothing to hold it together. They can separate, they can move around. Now, one of the things we like to use are these gates folding corner, hinged corner forms. We use those on any kind of irregular um, angle and we just screw them on. They're actually a concrete form made of plywood and they will go to any shape up to a little past 90 degrees. So we use those because effectively these 30 degree bins are bastard joints. Um, you guys remember that I was saying that we had laid out all of our bastard joints to hit windows, but this entire like over 100 foot run here, the bastard is that corner because I can eat both uh, off layout ends. I can lay it right there. So that works out really well. I'm just gonna keep walking around. But that said, we end up with bastards on almost every other face. So uh, we actually didn't end up with one on that straight right there. It just happened to land perfectly. It was off by about an eighth of an inch. Um, but every other one you'll see this, and this is how we treat those. We just find, you know, the boys marked like center of window. You see that little paint mark? And we just went as close to that as we could. We still got to fill that in with foam. And uh, before the pour, the boys also have to foam everything down to the footing. So still a good little bit to do this morning. We're going to pour, I think, around 10 or 11 a.m., we built a little hopper that will slide along top of the wall to allow us to place this pour, this 25 yards without a pump truck. Um, like I said, Doug built us a road. You can see the telehandler over there with a little bit of ICF. He built us that road to um, make it possible for concrete trucks to get back here. So the first pump truck we will need will be on our massive day. I did the math and the wall, this wall here, 12 foot high is gonna be 111 yards with a six inch core. Plus, you know, around 5,000 square feet of flat work and another 800 feet of flat work on a pool. It's going to be a, uh, don't think it'll break my record from earlier this summer in California with 250 yards, but I think it'll probably be in the 175, 180 yard range for a one day pour, which will, completely top out our walls on this entire thing, except from right about here on down, it jumps up another story, and then there will be a, a breezeway where the roof connects to the garage. There's a bonus room over the garage, and there's a hallway running through that, that attic of breezeway that connects, so it'll be like a bridge. It's pretty neat. Only issue with tailgating this is this corner here is up out of the ground, probably almost five feet. 
And uh, so we may have to use the telly or skid steer or something to place the, uh, the concrete in this one corner. Okay, so one thing guys I wanna show you, they haven't put them on yet because we were trying to figure out where we were gonna to top out. This is a patio out here. And because of that, we're gonna have the patio itself will cantilever out over the edge of this wall. So we now know what we're gonna do and we'll top it out this morning with a half block. But these brackets made by Fabform, they're called ZT brackets. We put these on here, gives us a nice, you know, held perfect 90. We cut away the core and we make our own tees. This one here worked out awesome because I didn't actually cut away a web so I don't have to do any bracing on the back side. If it happened that this web here was in the middle of our pour, then I would need to brace you know, back here with something to keep that from bulging. But as it is, it's no different than any other form. So we're gonna put on two of these Zs on each side of each of these Ts, this one here and that one down there. And we will top this wall with a one half ripped block and uh, we'll be in business. So uh, stay tuned for the pour. It'll probably be a little bit like the footing video. I got three or four Amish helping today. So I'll shoot what I can. Uh, we should be pouring at a little slower pace, so I should be able to get a little more shooting done, but not, not full time. I just got to keep them out of the camera and kind of respect that, and um, we'll uh, we'll show you we'll show you the progress. All right, so I was totally wrong. This pour ended up being very hectic, and I did not have any time to shoot. So we got just very little footage. Um, obviously the boys were integral, so they were kind of in the way. This is our little hopper we made. I'll show you more in a later video, kind of how we did that just out of a couple pieces of plywood, created a little thing with skis that would slide along. It would keep the concrete out of the nubs. So we were able to, you know, continue to pour without taping off the whole top and make, make a mess. And, uh, it worked out really good, a little tedious, but you know, significantly better than spending 12 or 1500 on a pump. And uh, yeah, you can see us doing it a little more here. This is really all the footage I got of the placement of the concrete, but I mean, placements really just fill it up. So guys, this, port, this build is going amazing. I will see you guys on the weekend.